Welcome back to the Castle Grounds Apiary. Today, we're going to do a little venom extraction. So you may or may not have noticed that there's not a whole lot of content on YouTube or even on Google, Googleable, Google things. Uh, that talk about bee venom extraction in detail. Now, I didn't do a comprehensive search of the internet, but I did a fairly thorough cursory dive into how these work, uh, can you make your own, what are plans, um, what can you expect to extract on a per hive basis. Just trying to wrap my mind around how much venom uh, do you get per hive? And so I was going to build my own plans are non-existent. It was going to take some testing, some R&D, uh, and a fair amount of money to dial it in. And then I found this guy. This is called the Bee Whisperer. Why is it called that? No idea. It doesn't make sense to me, but that's what it's called. I know that other people have bought these, have used these, but it doesn't seem like any of the big brands, big names on YouTube have tried them, or at least they're not talking about it. Don't know, not sure why. Part of me felt like they were kept secret because bee venom is very expensive and people don't want to share that. Maybe other people don't like it because some say maybe it's cruel to use. I'm not sure, but it doesn't hurt the bees. It pisses them off pretty good. It doesn't hurt them. So we're gonna talk about it. Let's uh. Let's look here. It's fairly simple. We have a sheet of glass under a grid, a circuit, really is all it is, that is powered by small DC batteries. This has a switch and it is now active. Now what happens is, is when the bees land on this grid and they complete the circuit, it gives them a small shock. And when it does that, they get mad, their impulse is to sting, and they sting the glass. Now, we all know that when bees sting you, they usually die, and that's because their stingers have these microscopic barbs on them that don't allow them to pull it back out or retract it. But because they can't actually penetrate the surface of the glass, they sting it, they excrete the venom, and they, and they live. A lot of times what we'll see is they actually stay on there and they sting it multiple, multiple times. And then once that pheromone is on the glass, other bees come to it and start to sting it. So the way it works is, you stick this guy in the, on the landing board and it kind of just rests on the bottom of the brood box. And then on their way back in, they land on it and they just congregate on this thing and they sting it, they sting it, they sting it. Now I haven't used this a bunch. I still have some things to learn. I've had mixed results with it, honestly. Um, but it does work. It is expensive though. Don't think that if you just want to dabble in this, that you should go out and buy this because this was $400, I believe. But it is well made and it does work. And uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on one of our hives. We're gonna let it sit for an hour and we're gonna see just exactly how much venom we get. Now I'm gonna choose one of my ornery hives. Now when I say ornery, one of the more defensive hives. If I went over there and put this on the barnyard hive, I don't think I would get a whole lot. But my mermaid hive is not super nice so we're gonna put it on there and if you're one of those people that doesn't wear gear you want to rethink that when you're doing this because they are not happy and uh, I'm probably gonna take some stings through the gear I have so far anyway they find a way to sting me through my gloves and anyway that's fine um, we'll do this we'll set it for an hour I'll show you guys what it looks like and then we will uh, take this home we will scrape it off, we'll, we'll weigh it, and we'll see exactly how many milligrams you can hope to yield per minute, per hour, per hive. Finally, some concrete information out there for people who might be interested. All right, let's go make a mess. Hey guys. Yeah, remember me, the guy that you hate? Yeah, I'm back. Will you guys move? I'm gonna just put this right here, okay? Okay, they're already getting pissed. I'm going to get my gloves. Screw this. 
All right, you probably think I'm a sissy because I wouldn't even slide that thing up there without gloves on, but I think 90% of the stings I've had in my life have come from this hive, so they don't hesitate. Oh my God, that scared me. They don't hesitate to let me know how they feel. And it's still a little early. There's not a whole lot of activity yet. Okay, we're on. It'll be the foragers that come back and go on that normal left side that find it first. They'll land on it and kind of explore and wonder what's going on. They'll get mad, they'll start to get heated. Let's see what they think. Okay, so it's been about an hour, and you can see they're, they're congregating on it at some point. They finally uh, didn't like it, but I think we tripped the circuit protector breaker thing. So Brandon's going to reset power, and you'll hear him buzz. Listen. There we go. Yeah, they don't like that. So let's leave that on for a little bit longer, because I don't think they collected that much venom. They're going to be one, real pissed off when we stinging do this it actively right now. You see it? I can see this one stinging right here. You can see how aggressive they get. You can see that one stinging actively. Look at him. He's tagging both. Of and they're tagging my hand. That feels good. You would piss them off right now. Look who we got today. We Brandon's just, here should, and Jeff. We should start over this way. Yeah, let's start at the, we'll the nice, to we're going to start with the barnyard and end with the death. You brought your beer? Well, do you think I'm just going to let it get hot? I'm going to need you to pour it through my veil. <laughs> All right, so this Hey, it killed one of those, look, that, one of those predator flies. Robber flies, flies yeah. That's, hey, how are, these, how are these girls getting in and out of this hive entry? They're sque the, squeezing. So, I guess they can they squeeze through. The edges? All right, so we're done with the venom extraction. We are going to pull the extraction board out. Since we're about to do an inspection on this hive, we want to let them calm down a little bit. They did the over circuit overload protection thing, so it's off. I'll check this out when I power cycle it, because I want them to leave the hot. I want them to leave the board. I was worried we're going to get just power cycle it. So it's going to start sending current through there again, and they're going to. Hopefully, leave. Are you starting with the mermaid hive? Justin? Hopefully, your mom. No, we'll do this one that. last. <coughs> yeah, let them calm down a little bit. So if you piss them off. Well, I was trying to power cycle it so they would leave it, and then go back about their business. Is the battery dead? The light's not coming on. Dude, you're gonna make that spider come out by getting these bees caught in. They are caught in the web. He's got a mule right there. Who are you calling a mule? A mule. I haven't been called that in yeah. days. He's going to come out and get this bee. <laughs> I haven't called that in days. Yeah. There you go. I'm out, power cycle. So it doesn't look like... Oh, they're mad. Oh, they're pissed. <laughs> He's talking to your phone. It doesn't look like there's a lot of venom on there, but if you look at the glass, you can see that kind of opaque yeah, I see it. lack of reflectivity. That's all dried venom. Why'd that pee just land and die? Ooh, some of them are dead. Yeah, a lot of them are. So they say this thing hurt them. Look right there, see the stingers stick Jeez, out? The EPA's gonna be all over us. Yeah, I wouldn't post that video. Yeah, yeah def I'm definitely not posting this. Edit that part out. I'm gonna edit this part out. Oh, no. So a few hours later, we are done. We're now home to clean the glass. I mentioned earlier, any opaqueness is dried bee venom. So you can see there is some there. It doesn't look like a ton. And it never does uh, until you scrape it. So then you take the razor and the, don't know what that is, 
the Bee Whisperer kit comes with tools for this. And they also recommend you wear a respirator, face mask, as well as uh, safety glasses, really anything to cover any mucous membranes because as you scrape this powder, if it becomes airborne and you inhale it, it's really no different than being stung. And there's the equivalent of, I don't know, hundreds of bee stings on this glass. So if you are mildly allergic like I am, this amount of venom, I suppose, could kill you. So wear the proper gear. As you scrape it, you'll see the powder start to accumulate. Oh, I just lost some. Oopsie. The very first time I did this, I had a mountain of bee venom. Oh, I can already feel it in the air. You can't see the bee venom particles in the air, but I can feel it. <laughs> on my airways so do use caution that on the blade who knows how many individual stings it would take to add up to that much dried bee venom don't know Alright, so you can get as hog wild as you want to with this part. We still don't do a whole lot with the venom. I suppose someday we might use it. Right now we just put it into face creams and put it in our face lotion to combat wrinkles. And we still have not yet really come up with a perfect formula for that. We are still in the experimental phases. You can see we've got a nice amount of bee venom here and I have not got it all cleaned off yet. But we'll go ahead and throw it on a scale to give you guys an idea. Like I said, when I started this, I had no idea what could be expected. And so I'm kind of just doing this for all the other interested people out there. Okay, so after scraping this for nearly 10 minutes, I was able to get every single last drop. And I also had to put on a sharper blade of uh, dried bee venom. And I came up with 28. It, can, it kind of bounces back between, or bounces back and forth between 28 and 25 milligrams. Call it 25. Oh, look at that. Jumped up to three. Now down to 29. So it's on, it's on the edge. Of 30 milligrams this is just a cheap $20 uh, Amazon scale so call it 25 30 milligrams and you can go on an Etsy store there's a couple pages to sell this stuff so after an hour and a half close to two hours on the hive 30 milligrams of dry concentrated bee venom and some of that stuff I don't know I can't tell if all that's pure bee venom or not but it's what we're looking at Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.